Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem populating next right pointers in each node. So we're given a perfect binary tree and what that basically means is that it's perfectly balanced. So every single node that does have children will have exactly two children, but the leaf nodes of course don't have children and that's where the tree is gonna stop. And if you follow that rule, you'll see that the tree is gonna be pretty much perfectly symmetrical. Right, there's not any holes in the tree. There's no missing leaf nodes, nothing like that. The node definition though is a little bit interesting. Of course, we have the value for each node. Each node has a left and right pointer, but it also has a next pointer. That's the difference. Our goal is to populate each next pointer so that it's pointing at the node that's to the right of it. So for example, this two does have a node to the right of it, and we need to populate that pointer. But of course, three does not have a node to the right of it, so it's gonna continue to point at null. The default value, the initial value of the next pointer, I guess we can assume is gonna be null. Also, the root node does not have any right node, so it's also gonna point at null. So this problem is a bit tricky because most of the time you might assume DFS is how you're gonna solve all tree problems, but don't forget that BFS is another way to traverse trees. And in this case, BFS will lead us to the easiest solution for this problem. We're gonna traverse each level. So first, we're gonna be at this node, and that's the only node on this level. Then we're gonna start traversing the next level. The way we're gonna do that is with a queue data structure. We're gonna add the children of this node to the queue, and then when we're done traversing this node, then we're gonna go uh, start at the beginning of the queue. We're gonna look at two. We're gonna say, okay, it needs to be pointing at the next node in the queue. So this is gonna be pointing at three. Then we're gonna be done traversing this, and then we're gonna get to three. It's gonna be pointing at the next node. We know there is no next node in the queue. And then as we were doing that though, we would also have been populating the next queue. We would have taken two's children, added them to the queue, take three's children, also add them to the queue. And so that algorithm is the easiest way to solve this problem. If you've done a BFS solution before, it should be pretty straightforward. Now, the time complexity is gonna be big O of n because we're traversing every node in the tree. The memory complexity is also gonna be big O of n because we do need a queue and we know that the last level in the tree is gonna have about n divided by two nodes in it. So therefore the memory complexity is gonna be this, which we know the memory complexity of that can be reduced to big O of n. So the question is, is there a better solution? Now they mention in this problem that technically we can do DFS and the extra memory uh, from the recursive DFS does not count as extra memory. So if we can do that, then we can basically say that we've done it in big O of one memory. And the way we could do that actually is more simple than you might think. Because suppose we're doing this recursively, we get to the node one. We know that the root node is never gonna have a next node anyway, but we know that its children should be connected, right? Two, to get two to point at three, we can't do that from two. But if we're already at the parent, it should be easy for us because we have access to the left child and the right child. So what we can say is the left node dot next should equal the right node. So that's pretty simple. And we can do that once we do DFS, we can get to two. We can do the same for its children. Four should be pointing at five. But the hard part is gonna be, how do we get five to point at six? Because two does not have access to six. And this is the part where it's easy to get stuck but the solution is more simple than you might think. Remember, we did connect two to three, so two has access to three, and three has access to six, so it should be possible for us to connect five to six. And of course, that algorithm could be done recursively, and we could keep doing that on a bigger and bigger tree. But this isn't a true big O of one memory solution. It's still using big O of n memory because of the recursion. But there is actually a true big O of one memory solution, which I'm gonna be showing you and then coding up. And it actually relies on the same technique that we just talked about. We can use these pointers that we're creating with these next pointers that we're creating to our advantage. And we can use the original BFS algorithm that we were talking about. Remember, we're first gonna traverse the first level. And as we do that, we're gonna be building a queue using the children. 
and then we're going to traverse the second level and then while doing that we're going to be building a queue of all of its children but if we were clever and we connected the next pointers before we traversed the level we wouldn't even need a queue meaning we wouldn't need extra memory we could do it in constant memory but what we would need is a pointer to the beginning of the next level that's all we need because the nodes are already connected so the algorithm is going to be pretty simple this is going to be our current node. This is going to be our next node. We're going to know that this is the next node because it's the left child of the current node. This is the beginning of the current level. So the beginning of the next level must be the left child. So what we're going to do is take the children of the current node and connect them together until we can't do that anymore. Now, in the first case, it's pretty simple. We're just connecting these three can't be connected anywhere else. Next, we're going to take our current pointer and our next pointers and shift them. So current is going to be over here. And then our next pointer is just going to be the left child of the current pointer. So the next pointer is going to be over here. Now, starting at our current node, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to connect the children. Four is going to be connected to five. We also need to connect five to six. We can do that by taking by using this next pointer, getting the next pointer, and then getting the left child, and then you know using that to connect uh, the right child of two to that. So we, we connected these. Now our current pointer is over here, but we're gonna shift our current pointer now to be over here at the next node because we're using the next pointer. We're gonna go through this entire level just like a regular BFS. Now let's connect the children of three together. Six is gonna be connected to seven and seven can't be connected anywhere because three doesn't have a next pointer. That must mean that there isn't anything over here. And then we would try to shift our current pointer to be over here, right, at the four. And then we our next level node would be pointing at null because four does not have a left child. And that's how you know that we're done with the algorithm. Because as we go through a level, all we're doing is connecting the children of that level. So if this level does not have any children, there's nothing for us to do. We already connected the tree. You can see it looks pretty much exactly like what we wanted it to be. And we did it in constant memory. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. Let's initialize our current and our next pointers. The current is going to be at node. And the next is going to be the left child of that node. But it's possible that the node that we're given could actually be null itself. So I'm going to do a little ternary operator in Python. So if the node is non-null, then we're going to take the left child. Else, we're going to take null. And remember, our condition to do the BFS is going to be while current is not null and the next level is not null. So now we want to connect the children. First, we want to take the left child of the current node and connect it to the to the right node. So we'll take the next pointer of the left node and connect it to current dot right. And we might also want to connect the right node if there is a node that we can connect it to. But that will only be the case if current dot next is not null because if current dot next is not null, then we can say current dot right dot next is going to be set to current dot next dot left just like we did in the drawing explanation i know this gets pretty abstract when you have so many pointers but i recommend drawing it out if you don't remember what this is referring to and th and those are the only two connections we're going to be making per node next we're going to shift the current node to the next node in the same level if it exists so now if current though is pointing at null maybe the next node didn't exist so if not cur then current is going to be set to the next level and the next level is going to be set to current dot left and then we're going to you know just continue the bfs as if we're at the next level of the tree we're going to keep doing that until the next pointer is at null that's how we know we've pretty much done the entire connection and for some reason in this problem they actually want us to return the root node good thing we still have a reference to the root node which was the parameter node i think it's kind of dumb that they want you to do that but whatever let's run it to make sure that it works and as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.